at Seoul's Harbor Rescue Mission in Regina. Preparation is underway for supper. Volunteers are expected to serve more than 300 people Wednesday night. For three decades, the organization has provided free meals Monday to Friday. And the reasons why people need help vary. People are coming uh, because they don't have uh, the funds to provide all of the things that they need. So if you think, um, should I pay my rent or should I eat? Uh, should I send my kid to daycare or should I eat? Seoul's Harbor relies on the goodwill of people. People do donate groceries like turkeys and hams, but the organization can do more with financial donations as they can stretch it further. For that, they rely on a direct mail campaign where donors typically mail in checks. Without mail coming in, it means we don't have the funds coming in to purchase the food that we need. Um, yes, it could be sitting at Canada Post. We don't know. At Regina's Food Bank, they are also feeling the impact of the strike. Like Seoul's Harbor, they rely heavily on direct mail, especially during the holidays. It makes up about a quarter of the food bank's revenue. CEO John Bailey is encouraging people to donate online. Not only can we process your donation immediately, we can make sure you get your, your tax return uh, same day. Since 2019, Regina's Food Bank has seen a 233% increase in usage. This year, on track to be up another 15%. Bailey tries to make sure the support process is as welcoming as possible. The hardest 15 steps are between the time they enter the, enter the door to our building and, and actually get to our, to our front desk to, to get, their, get their service. So we want to make sure that we're in a, an environment that empowers folks. Back at Seoul's Harbor, Ingram says nothing will deter them from their goal. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we're going to help as many people as we can help. Um, and um, we'll still be here uh, after the strike and uh, doing what we do. Jeffrey Tram, CBC News, Regina.